In waters of baptism, Brother Gerard died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him the eternal glory. Good morning again, and please welcome Father Tony as we sing number, hymn number 304, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say, number 304. of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. Lay down, O weary one, lay down your head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was so weary, worn, and sad. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the soul of your servant, Brother Girard, who, for love of Christ, walked the way of perfect charity, may rejoice in the coming of your glory, and together with his brothers, may delight in the everlasting happiness of your kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead. 
and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if before men indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastise a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Gently you raise me and heal my weary soul. You lead me by pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Though I should wander the valley of death, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff, my comfort and my hope. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. You have set me a banquet of love, in the face of hatred, crowning me with love beyond my power to hold. Shepherd, 
Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Surely your kindness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of my God forevermore. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just... I'm sorry. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all fall asleep, but we will all be changed. In an instant, in the blink of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For that which is corruptible must clothe itself with incorruptibility, and that which is mortal must clothe itself with immortality. And when this which is corruptible clothes itself with incorruptibility, and this which is mortal clothes itself with immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through through our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Matthew. Glory. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus answered, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, 
all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. You will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We all feel the loss of Gerard, who brought so much joy to our lives over the decades. Born in a large family, four sisters, three brothers, he learned two things even as a child, one, the importance of prayer. From his parents, he'd learn how to fold his hands in prayer, how to make the sign of the cross, how to go to church and participate in the sacraments. And from his brothers and sisters, he would learn how to play, how to fight, how to forgive, how to live a community life that was steeped in meaning and purpose and the power of God. He grew up in Manhattan, a true New Yorker, not a Jeffrey come lately like me that just moved from Ohio there. And he loved the city that he lived in and was born into. His family lived a few blocks from Gracie Gracie Mansion, the mayor's uh, mansion. Somehow they never got invited over for lunch though. (laughs) But he loved his city, and he loved his country. And when he was a teenager, he was called to serve in the military in one of the most horrific wars in history, World War II, in the European theater. As a teenager, he didn't think of anything but answering that call. And he served in the motor pool, and as large sections of the German army were surrendering in Belgium, he was uh, assigned to be a prisoner of war guard. And he would tell stories about that in a self-deprecating manner. Whenever he would talk about himself, he wouldn't be saying, I did this, I did that, I did the other thing. It would be more like, boy, I really goofed that up, (laughs) or that was... It was always with a sense of intelligent humility, knowing his shortcomings. And throughout his life, he would have a childlike quality about him. And even the German prisoners picked this up. Uh, One time he said he caught the German prisoners making moonshine and having a little party, and they offered him a drink, and he thought, ah, they're trying to poison me. Then they'll escape. He said, but I saw them drinking and didn't seem to have any ill effects. I had one drink with them. And he said, well, next morning I woke up fully clothed in my bunk with my rifle across my lap. (laughs) The Germans belovingly put him passed out back in his bed. And he had many other such tales as a prisoner of war, a guard. He would receive the European Victory Medal and also the Occupation Medal of Europe before he was mustered out of the army, made the rank of corporal. And when he was mustering out, uh, the register said, would you like to go into the inactive reserves? You'll be able to keep your rank as corporal. And so he said, oh, sure, why not? And he checked the box, okay. It probably was a bad move. He went back to Manhattan and he was working as a Coca-Cola delivery truck driver. When the Korean War broke out, six days before his inactive reserve ran out, and he got a message, he was activated. They rushed all these old World War II has-beens on the troop ships and went really slow towards Korea so they could train them while on board. And the uh, voyage seemed like it was going to take forever. They arrived in Korea in the winter in blizzards and snows. They were all put on boxcars to be moved gradually towards the front lines. 
and he tells of the night when they start moving, every hour the train would stop and they'd say, off the train, the tracks are mined, and they would jump off into knee-deep snow, wait for the all clear, get back on the train, go another hour, everybody off the train, on the train, off the train, all night. Finally, towards morning, the men said, let's just get blown up. We're not jumping into that snow anymore. Mm -hmm. But it was a tough year in Korea. Uh, his main thought was, thank God I got back in one piece. And when he came back in one piece, he was not quite the same. He was unhappy with his job. He wanted to do something more with his life. He would served his country, but there was something more that was needed. And he noticed the young men in the neighborhood who had joined religious orders, they were all very happy. He said, I want something like that. And first he joined the Marinals for a few months, uh, but he realized it wasn't for him. Uh, being a New Yorker, farming wasn't the deal. You know, the, the classic thing where he was sent out to uh, pick uh, potatoes and he was looking for the potato trees <laughs> rather than in the soil. He'd always tell that story. But then he heard after he left the Marinals about the Society of St. Paul on Staten Island, dropped them a line, made a, an appointment to visit. Uh, Father Barano contacted the Marinals. They said, sure, he's okay. And when he was out visiting Staten Island, he saw the dynamism, the priests and brothers printing, binding, shipping books all over the country and all over the world. And it resonated instantly with him. And so he asked uh, Father Mario, well, when could I start? And he said, anytime you want. And this was Holy Week when he was visiting. And so he joined us three days after Easter, during that resurrection period. And he was assigned to a letter press. Uh, those are the type of printing presses that would be using raised lead. And many of us in the Society of St. Paul learned how to run those uh, wonderful machines. And in his very first year, he was assigned to printing the Word of God. It was an insert for parish bulletins. And every single week, there had to be 100,000 of those printed, prepared, and shipped to the parishes, actually over 100,000. And we have to think for a minute, in his first year with us as a postulant, as a new type printer, he would have printed 5,200,000 pieces of literature. <laughs> and that was just the beginning of his life of productivity in the kingdom of God. And all of us in the Pauline family, we take this for granted. We forget how many millions and tens of millions of pieces of literature were produced and distributed by the U.S. province alone, not to mention all of the other provinces and regions of the world. And he was quite rightly happy in doing that, doing something that you could see the result of. You had something tangible that you were accomplishing. And he was doing this not just as a printer, but as a consecrated religious. So he would spend time in prayer. He would learn uh, the power of the Eucharistic visit. He had a great devotion to the rosary, uh, always willing to say it over and over, countlessly throughout his life. And with that devotion, a great love and tender care for the Blessed Virgin. He took his final vows in this very chapel in 1963 with Blessed James Alberione, a saint in the church, a founder of the Society of St. Paul and all of the branches of the Pauline family. What a great privilege that was, along with Brother Joe, who is with us today. And he would accept assignments whatever they might be in whatever house he was sent. And he was a man who had a sense of peace and joy about him. And this is such a wonderful quality to have. 
We don't know who's holy and who's not holy. How could we judge that? We don't know what's going on inside a person. But certainly a person with a holy, joyous spirit is very close to God at each stage of life. And he always brought that spirit of joy to the communities in which he lived. He was a man of prayer, reflection, hard work, and devotion. He loved the work in distribution and going on parish exhibits uh, and trying to meet people, talk with them, share with them the products of the Society of St. Paul. Now, besides his love for people, he had a legendary love for animals, especially, of course, dogs. And his favorite dog up in Dearborn, Michigan was Butu, a uh, sort of African dog of some sort that was so attached to Jerry, if Jerry went out to get the mail, Butu would just lay on the floor crying till he got back. They were really closely attached. And he had a theological view of heaven where he said, well, I know Butu's going to be in heaven with me. I said, well, how's that, Jerry? He said, well, in heaven you can have everything, anything you want. I want Butu there, and so I'm going to have it. I said, okay. So I'm certain now that he's up there frolicking with that great dog of his. Uh, however, his dog, Mickey, would be lucky to make it to purgatory. <laughs> That's another story. But his love for animals, his love for people, was unfeigned and real. And there was something always childlike about him, even though he'd been through two wars. And although his language could be quite salty at times, to say the least, uh, even when he might be uh, disagreeing with one of, or other of his fellow religious in some language suitable to a soldier of the nation rather than a hero in the kingdom of God, <laughs> there was no malice behind it, you know. Even while he might be cursing you out, you go, hmm, he still loves me. <laughs> there was always that feel. And that childlike quality never left him so that his uh, nephews and nieces, when they'd see him, when they were children themselves coming to visit, they would run to him, hug him. Here's somebody that loves us, our favorite uncle. He has our spirit and our soul. They would want to hear his stories and hear his tale and be a part of it. Now, in his life, he enjoyed having fun. And because of that, we all will miss him. Now, we had mentioned last night that his signature drink was seven and seven. Maybe gave the impression that he was an alcoholic. He wasn't. He'd have a seven and seven a couple times a year, mostly. But in Staten Island, when we heard the news of his passing, even though we're not seven and seven drinkers ourselves, we brought out the real seven up and seven, and we uh, had an evening sharing stories about Jerry and his stories that he shared with us. And it's an evening of mutual love that we will mostly remember. <laughs> there might be a few gaps in the memory uh, as we imbibed with his favorite signature drink. But now he is drinking in a paradise of heaven, intoxicated by God, greeted by his family members, greeted by his fellow religious who have been waiting for him to join them. And he's now in that kingdom that will have no end. His burdens have been lifted from him, and he is able to live like a child of God before God and eternity. We all stand for the prayers of the faithful. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church, 
confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayer to his. In baptism, Brother Gerard received the light of Christ, is scattered the darkness now, and lead him over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord Brother Gerard was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord Brother Gerard spent his life following Jesus, poor, chaste, and obedient. Count him among all holy men and women who sing in your courts. We pray to the Lord. Lord For the deceased members of the American province, that God may call them to happiness in the company of saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord For the deceased members of the Pauline family, that God may welcome them into the sanctuary of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord for the family and friends of Brother Gerard who seek comfort and consolation, that God will heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for our personal intention. We pray to the Lord. Lord Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. During the preparation of the gifts, please join in singing hymn number 255, you are mine, number 255. I will come to you in the silence. I will lift you from all your fears. You will hear my voice, I claim you as my choice, be still and know I am here. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we have received. I am hope for all who are hopeless, I am eyes for all who long to see. In the shadows of the night, I will be your light. Come and rest in me. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me. I will bring you home. I love you and you are mine. I am strength for all the despairing, healing for the ones who dwell in shame. All the blind will see the lame will all run free, and all will know my name. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me, I will bring you I love you and you are mine. I am the word that leads all to freedom. I am the peace the world cannot give. I will call your name, embracing all your pain. Stand up now, walk and live. Do not
not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me, I will bring you home. I love you and you. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, O Lord, on your servant brother Gerard, for whom we offer you the sacrifice of praise, humbly entreating that reconciled with you through these devoted offices, he may merit to rise again to life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, and those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed and not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in Are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take these, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Lord and my God. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you, Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world 
and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religion. Remember your servants whom you have called from this world to yourself and grant that Brother Gerard Roach, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, and glory and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, beholding who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring me to everlasting.
Our hymn during the reception of Holy Eucharist is number 314, I am the bread of life, number 314. with me. Uh, this is, uh, it's tough. My name is Timothy Gerard Roach, named after Brother Gerard. He was a brother in the Society of St. Paul before I was born. A rose by any other name is still a rose. He was born Thomas Michael Roach. His father and mother were Irish immigrants. Both arrived in the United States around 1911, 1910. They were penniless. 
They raised eight children. Tom was <clears throat> one of four boys and four girls in a small apartment on the Upper East Side. The men of the family now, Tom's brothers and himself, they're gone. There are two sisters remaining. Um, they wished me to pass along their warmest regards. Thomas Michael Roach was his birth name, um, son of Daniel Roach and Mary Cunningham. He became known as Brother Gerard T. Roach, SSP. To me, he was none of those names. Please forgive me. He was, he was sim, sim, simply my uncle Tom, uncle, <clears throat> excuse me, simply my uncle Tommy. He's the Irish twin of my father, Joe, both born in a 10 month period. He was from the very beginning, and I have done my research like a good nephew. He was unique, special, different, and a holy man who loved God and was not afraid to express his love of God. He was the bringer of joy and, happy, and happiness to, to children like me who couldn't wait for him to visit. We would be so excited when he was coming to visit the house. He would get off the train in his garb and come walking down the street. Myself, my brother, Kevin, the age of five, six, seven. We would... We would run to meet him and grab his clothes. We just loved him. We also couldn't wait for the annual picnic at Staten Island. He made us part of the Society of St. Paul. My mother and father and my six brothers, my five brothers and a sister, along with a slew of nieces and nephews and grandnieces and nephews, um, we all loved Uncle Tom. We couldn't wait for that family picnic on Staten Island. We had the time of our lives every year at that picnic. And those memories, that he gave us, only him, are priceless. Now, if you'll bear with me, this is a publication from the Society of St. Paul called Pastoral Life, dated January of 1987. Brother Gerard, Uncle Tommy gave me this sometime around 1988 or 89 when I visited him in Dearborn, Michigan. I'm going to read two excerpts to you because I think you just have to hear them. If you didn't know Brother Gerard in life, you missed out. Right, Pete? 
you missed out. This is, this is Brother Gerard speaking. I finished high school and at 18 I joined the Army at the tail end of World War II. I became a POW guard in Europe. After I was discharged, I was unable to find work, so I enlisted in the inactivated reserves for three years. War broke out in Korea. In 1950, just 10 days before my enlistment was up, so back for another 13 months. Talk about the luck of the Irish. I hardly knew where in the world Korea was and when I found myself on a troop ship heading for Asia. He served in both theaters. He would never say whether he saw any action. I don't know whether he saw any action. Um, it's possible that he saw action in, in Korea. Now this is a story that he has told me and he wrote in this article and I want you all to hear it. I entered the Mary Knoll Brotherhood formation program after a few weeks of class. Our novice master told me, Jerry, today you can go out into the field and help your brothers pick potatoes. They're already out there and they'll tell you what to do. I found the brothers in the middle of the field and introduced myself. Their response was friendly and straightforward. Nice to meet you. Start digging. <laughs> the brothers realized that day they had a real New Yorker on their hands. And when I looked puzzled and asked them, but the novice master said, S sent me to pick potatoes, not to dig. Where are the trees? The laugh they got from, from my ignorance helped them all the more in their digging efforts. After a couple of hours, I grew tired and decided I didn't care for this job. My fantasies about saving the world through heroic work in the missions were definitely brought down to earth. I decided that I had to have a serious talk with the novice master. Being patient and kind, he said, Jerry, I have just a job for you. You'll be in charge of the laundry. I was the only one assigned to the task, and it was larger than I imagined. I would start on Thursday, and just before finishing, on the following Thursday morning, everyone would come and throw down their laundry bags on top of me again, and the, and the cycle would repeat itself. Needless to say, this lasted only a few short weeks. Back again, I went to the novice master and said, Father, I really don't think this life is for me. No, no, Jerry. I'm sure the good Lord chose you for a vocation of the brotherhood. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. From now on, you'll work in the boiler room. That's it, Father. First digging and picking potatoes, then going lower down into the laundry room, and now lower to the boiler room. Next stop must be hell. <laughs> I think I'll go home now. That's Brother Jerry. That's my Uncle Tom. For those of you who know this, I'd like you to say it with me.
Renewed by this life-giving sacrament, we pray, O Lord, that the soul of our brother Gerard, to whom you have you gave a part in your covenant, may be purified by the power of this mystery and rejoice without end in the peace of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We shall now proceed with the final commendation. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Brother Gerard, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Brother Gerard again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom, Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Saints of God, come to his aid. Come to meet him, angels of the Lord. Present him to God, to God the Most High. Receive his soul and present him to God, to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Gerard in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon brother Gerard in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, Turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother Gerard to his place of rest. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing hymn number 209, Sing with all the saints in glory, number 209. Give it to...
Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. 